Hello everybody, it's time for my annual sellout top 10 video! I do actually enjoy my anime of the year videos as it lets me talk about anime I wouldn't otherwise, but in the future I do want to make more interesting videos than reviews and lists. Anyway, let's just get straight into it. Here is my top 10 anime of 2016. Number 10, Boku Dake ga Inai Machi. Or otherwise known as Erased if you want to be a boring English person about it, which I will be actually because I'm too lazy to say its Japanese name again. Erased is about a 29-year-old guy who has a very specific ability that allows him to time travel to right before something horrible happens. Because of this, he has thrown back 18 years and he's now 11 and has to stop a serial killer. This is by no means the greatest show in the world. Some of the things that happen don't make sense and the ending kind of sucks, but I still had a lot of fun watching it. All the characters have clear motivations and are likable, it never gets boring, and I particularly enjoy a lot of the directing tricks. For example, the show uses lighting, camera perspective, and a lot of easy-to-miss details that all help to convey a specific feeling in a scene. This and several other small things add up to make a show that is definitely worth watching at least once. Number 9, Plantarian Chisana Hoshi no Yume, or Plantarian The Reverie of a Little Planet. It wouldn't be a complete Fireboy list if I didn't include an anime that Key was behind, but they tend to be behind anime that I really like, so what do you want me to do? Anyway, the short series starts off in a post-apocalyptic future where the main character is looking for supplies in a rundown city, during which he meets a sentient robot named Hoshino who used to be a service robot in a planetarium. The strongest aspect of the series for me was Hoshino's character. Being a robot, she offers an interesting perspective on the post-apocalyptic world and what life and death mean for her. She also forces the main character to think more deeply about his life. And on top of all this, Hoshino is also just really adorable. Another thing I really enjoyed about this anime is that instead of being a regular TV anime, it was actually streamed online. This allowed the creators to make the show however long or short it needed to be. The entire anime is only 5 episodes, and they tend not to be longer than 20 minutes, so because of this, the show had great pacing. I never felt like it was wasting time or rushing through things. So, with all these things put together, it's a very short and sweet show. Number 8, ReZero Kara Hajimaru Isekai Seikatsu, or ReZero for short. For the two of you that don't know already, ReZero is about a dude named Subaru who gets thrown into a magic world and gains the ability to travel into the past to avoid adversities. So it's similar to Erased in that instance, but instead of going drastically far into the past and staying there, ReZero Subaru ends up constantly having to go back a couple of days to avoid horrible things from happening. And it's in that gimmick where my love-hate relationship with the show comes into play. A lot of the time, the show can be repetitive and fall into a predictable flow where something bad happens, Subaru tries to fix it, he fails miserably, goes back into the past, and repeat until he does not fail miserably. But, most of the time, ReZero uses its repetitiveness not to progress its main plot, but to develop its main character. Subaru watches his friends and himself die on a regular basis, and he has to come to terms with the fact that he's powerless and has to strive to improve himself if he wants to succeed. So despite being a bit repetitive, it is still overall a good show. Number 7, Keijo. Most people write Keijo off as a silly, dumb, fan service anime, but that's exactly why it's awesome. Keijo takes its concept of having a sport where women try to knock each other out of a ring using their butts and just embraces its absurdity and dials it up to 11. There are things that defy physics, references to other shows, and some surprisingly well put together fight scenes that come together to make one roller coaster of an anime. Another thing I like about Keijo is how it presents its fan service. There have been anime in the past that go for this over the top silliness like High School of the Dead, but because of this the main plot suffered. But in Keijo, the fan service does not get in the way because the fan service is the main plot. So yeah, I love how Keijo is put together and it's a ton of fun to watch if you're into that kind of show. Number 6, Yuri on Ice. So, Yuri on Ice is about a professional figure skater named Yuri who, after a demoralizing defeat, wants to retire. But after five-time world champion Victor decides to be his coach, Yuri gets back on the horse. The thing this show does best is the figure skating. First of all, the figure skating scenes in the show look super pretty, and I think that's important because figure skating in real life is supposed to look pretty, so it's nice that they were able to convey that in the show. Something else I enjoyed about the way they portrayed competitive figure skating is how realistic they were about it. I've talked to someone who is very knowledgeable in this subject, and they have confirmed for me that everything about figure skating in the show is, for the most part, factual. Like how the scoring system works, how the events are put together, and a ton of other little details and references to real-life figure skating. 
but it was still well explained and interesting enough for people who know nothing about figure skating like myself to still enjoy it. In addition to the skating, Your and Ice also has a major theme of love, like different types of love and different ways love can be expressed. And this passionate emotion flows nicely back into skating, which is very passionate and full of emotion. There were some parts near the middle where the story slowed down and the animation looked kind of sketchy, but most anime companies fix up the animation when they release the series on Blu-ray. And overall, I did enjoy Yuri on Ice. It's worth a watch whether you like figure skating or not. Number 5, Sakamoto Deska. Or in English, haven't you heard, I'm Sakamoto. I'm not actually Sakamoto, it's just the name of the show. You know what, whatever, just move on. This show essentially is about a dude named Sakamoto who is really cool and it's one of the funniest shows I've seen. Sakamoto doesn't necessarily do cool things, he actually gets put into some pretty silly situations, but the way that he does everything is cool only because he's the one doing it and he's just that cool. No matter what happens to him or what he does, he somehow finds a way to do it cool. So the show's comedy has a build up where the viewer is wondering how Sakamoto is going to do a certain activity in a cool way. And it always happens in the most unexpected and hilarious way. The story also has another layer in the story arc that a lot of the side characters go through. Nearly every secondary character at first tries to be just as cool as Sakamoto before they realize they just can't. But sooner or later they accept the fact that they can never be as good as Sakamoto and just try to get as close as possible. And I really like that message of there's no way to be perfect but that doesn't mean you shouldn't try. And all of this comes together to make one of the funniest and most interesting shows of the year. Number 4, Mob Psycho 100. The plot of the show is quite complicated, but if I had to boil it down to one idea, it's about the main character Mob, who despite having psychic powers, only wants to make friends and fit in. Mob has all these powerful psychic abilities, but he realizes that as cool as they may be, they don't impress people, and especially not his crush. So instead of trying to train his powers, he instead focuses on trying to improve himself in other ways that'll help him to better connect with people. And what I said is not even half of what goes on in the show. Mob and his friends fight ghosts and evil organizations, a lot of the side characters in the anime go through character arcs, and a ton of other stuff. But everything ties into its central theme of trying to improve oneself. Oh, and before I forget, the show has amazing animation. Not in the sense that everything is detailed and moves naturally, but in the way that it's good at conveying an emotion in a scene. Characters go out of proportion and backgrounds change in art style, all to express a tone in a scene. This comes out particularly in the beautifully animated fight scenes. So overall, it's definitely worth a watch if you like pretty animation and human psychology. Number 3, Fate Clade Liner Prisma Elia 3rd Ray. So if you've seen my previous Anime of the Year videos, you would notice that last year's Fate Clade Liner season was not in it, where all the other seasons have made it into one of my lists. The reason for this was simply that Second Way Hurts wasn't what I enjoyed out of the Fate Clade Liner series. It was mostly a slice of life comedy, and while I do enjoy that genre, what I like about Fake Clade Liner is the cool fight scenes. Even the fights that were in that season were predictable and boring to me. None of these things can be said about Third Ray. It cuts all of that nonsense and gets straight to what I love about the series. It starts off the first episode with Ilya and the gang going to a parallel world and having to fight this evil organization. And from then on, the plot gets crazier, there's a lot of beautiful fight scenes and lots of references to other Fate series. This is what I love about the series. There's still a little bits of light-hearted comedy, but they are welcome because they're not too long, they don't get in the way of the main plot, and only act as a short break. So I'm really happy that Fake Clade Liner is still great! Number 2, Flip Flappers. Flip Flappers is kind of crazy, but simplified down, it's about the main characters Kokona and Papika going to these bizarre alternate dimension-like worlds to collect wish-granting jewels. And it's these worlds the characters explore and how they interact with them that makes the show so infinitely fascinating. First of all, these worlds are incredibly diverse. There's an eerie ghost infested world, and there's also a world that has a futuristic robot city, just to name two. And the tone of these worlds greatly impacts the tone of the episode, even down to the art style. The episode that has the ghost world is something that would be straight out of a horror movie, and the futuristic robot city's world has a lot of callbacks to classic action and mecha anime. It's all these different worlds and different situations that go a long way to flesh out the characters in the show. Each world brings out another aspect of a character or the relationships with others. By the end of the story, I knew a lot about each character and they felt like real people. And lastly, because a lot of the things in the show are unclear or can be left up to interpretation, it facilitates a lot of discussion. While the show was still airing, people were talking about the deeper meaning behind the worlds and the characters. And I'm sure as people have more time with the show, there will be more things to be talked about. If you are interested in this kind of discussion, I've linked to a compilation of a bunch of articles and posts in the description that I would recommend reading. After watching the show, of course. 
So Flip Flappers is for sure worth checking out. I know I'll be rewatching it several times in the near future. But without any ado, my favorite anime of 2016 is... Bananya! This anime had amazing visuals, a perfect soundtrack, and memorable characters. I cried during this because I knew there was never going to be a better anime than Bananya. <clears throat> okay, but seriously, as amusing as the Banana Cat anime is, it's unfortunately not my favorite anime of 2016. For real this time, my favorite anime of 2016 is... Ansatsu Kyoshitsu, or Assassination Classroom. When I narrowed down my list of anime I saw this year down to my 10 favorites, I asked myself, out of all these, what is the one that I can consider one of my all-time favorites? What is really going to stick with me and I can think of fondly years later? And after I answered that, it was pretty clear, it's Assassination Classroom. Now, putting this anime on this list is kind of cheating because I'm including both seasons. But the second season aired this year, and it was the thing to push this series up to number one for me. And I just really love Assassination Classroom. The show focuses on a class of students who, over the course of a year, have to assassinate this near-indestructible monster who is going to destroy Earth, and is now their teacher. And that's pretty much all of the main plot, because the show does not focus on big plot points. The real thing it focuses on, and where it shines, are the characters. There are 28 students, the teacher, and a couple other side characters who over the course of 47 episodes slowly grow and develop. So by the end, everybody's so different from how they started out, and the show did it in a way that felt natural. And in addition to the series' wide progression, most of the characters also get backstories and large moments where they change and grow as people. So, if it wasn't obvious, the thing I loved most about this series is the character development. But there are a myriad of other details that I love about this anime. For example, the tone is perfect. It's the right amount of serious when it needs to be, but it's also lighthearted and funny at times. This is especially prominent with the teacher, Kuro-sensei. Even though he's the target the class is trying to kill, Kuro-sensei remains as a huge ball of emotion and silliness. A lot of the things he does are really funny, and on top of everything, he's also a really good teacher. So you get scenes where one of his students are trying to kill him, and all he does is critique and teaches them how they can do it better next time. I'm rambling at this point, but also the visuals of the show are amazing. The directing and the animation itself come together to really sell the tone of each scene. The only real complaint I have against the show is the first half or the first season. Because it does a lot to set up and establish things that don't come into play until later. But it still does hold up on its own and it absolutely pays off incredibly well. All of these things add up to make not only my favorite anime of 2016, but also one of my favorite anime of all time. So, that's the end of this list and thus this video. I enjoyed anime in 2016 a lot. There were less anime I would consider an 8 or 9 out of 10, but the overall quality of anime went up, so there were a lot less I gave a 6 or lower. But I would still like to see more exceptional anime, so anime people, step it up for 2017. But for real, that's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed me talking about anime, and if you want to see more discussion videos, make sure to subscribe. I also have a gaming channel if you're interested in that. But for now, I will see you in the next video. Bye!